put some oil in my cylinders now. And now I want to oil up my honing stones a little bit here, or my plateau hone a little bit here. See if I can't make a real mess. So I don't need a lot. And now we're going to go ahead and get all those little bits out of here. So if you notice, it took a little bit and I had it spinning when I pushed it in and just jam it in. I had it spinning when I went in so I make sure I'm using those diamond tips to make sure we get all that grit out. So I'm probably going to do about 25 times on each side. Then we'll flip it over and we'll flush it when we do it again. Don't forget my used outboard motor buying guides for sale on Amazon right now for $20, offering a free session over the phone if you send me proof of purchase to keithanoutboarddad.com. Let's give you a little closer look here. I got to take these gloves off because they're full of oil before I touch my, my camera here. And then uh, we'll show you what this looks like. You're actually going to see how much grit came out of this. This was a clean brush. I clean them when I'm finished every time uh, with parts washer as well as some brake cleaner so that you can see now with a clean brush we went in here all the little bits of stone that are left over embedded in that cylinder wall after we do our honing. Now on the big honing machine they wash it as they're doing it but it still embeds some in there and again it was an old timer that taught me this so take a look at this. As you can see you can see all the grit you can see it running down here right on, this, on the top of the cylinders. Look at all that grit that came out just from that brush. So now we're going to do parts washer while we're doing it again to wash some of it out and then we'll do the other side. So parts washer running while we're doing it's going to get some of it out but it's not going to get all of it. We're going to have to spray brake cleaner in there. If I have trouble getting out I'll bring it back out to that pressure washer and blast it again if need be. A lot of times I don't have to. That's why I put clean rags on my bench and when I finish doing all my washing and I feel I'm good, I put it on the clean rags and I blast it with the pressure, uh, the um, brake cleaner again with that special nozzle I'm going to show you. And then I pick it up. If I have grit down on my nice clean rags, it's out to the pressure washer to make sure it's good. Definitely a little messy, but gets it done right. But before it gets a chance to dry out, I'm going to blast it a little bit with some brake cleaner. Also going to blast my holes again, where especially down the bottom, where my uh, head bolts go in because some grit probably got in there as well. It's a good idea to wear safety glasses if you're smart. Now I'm going to get in the ports here because I want to make sure I get that grit out of the ports. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the block up so that I can wash it out the exhaust ports because the exhaust ports as we know go down out of the motor. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of oil after I clean my hands and put it on the inside of that cylinder wall so it doesn't flash rust on me after I blast it with brake cleaner it washes all that oil off of it I don't want it to flash rust on me definitely go through a lot of rags to keep things clean help if I turn my light on too and we'll get the grit out of this one next so since this was kind of washed with the pressure washer I want to oil it up really good again the oil is what's helping the diamond tips slip into all those grooves from what I'm told from the old timer. So 
I'm not going to get as much, and I'll show you because this was the standard size. If you remember, we didn't really bore a lot of it, so it didn't get as much embedded into it. As you can see on this side, there's a fine amount of little grits there, but nothing nearly as much as before. You see some down here at the bottom, but again, nothing nearly. You see down the bottom of the port there, you can see some gray grit. So we're going to blast that the heck out of there after we do a wash. Now we'll go ahead and run our pressure washer, pressure washer, parts washer, and do a wash with what, kind of what the procedure that I call it. I'm sure uh, there's other names for things, but I'm going to go ahead and clean as much as we can out of there with our parts washer running. This is where it gets a little messy. If there's one thing I'm good at, it's making a mess. Now we'll blast it out with our brake cleaner, running out of brake cleaner here. Some fresh air in here. So now I'm going to show you what we use. So they sell these on Amazon. It's a little nozzle at the top. And as I'm counting the holes, looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, six holes. So it blows out all kinds of sides. Now, it doesn't always fit every single can. And this is kind of loose here, so I will get some, some overspray at my finger here. But I also will spray out those ports really well. And I can fish the tube all the way down into the port. All right, now we just do the other side, killed another can. Make sure all that cast iron sleeve is coated so that we don't get any flash rust on it. Let's clean this side out. And see what it looks like. So we can see now, there's a few bits of carbon that I see there from the exhaust that's going to continue to break up. I see a little bit of dirt there that comes from my exhaust port, but that's like bits of carbon. I don't see any more grit in there. So we'll spray this out one more time on the bench here just to make sure we got it all. And then we'll start reassembly. Final test now. We got everything clean and spotless. I sprayed out like three, four times, just kept flushing. As I was saying, before my daughter rudely interrupted me. No, my daughter's allowed to interrupt me anytime. Uh, she's getting married this year. Pretty cool. So, um, to a godly man, thank God. So now let's pull our piston out and we can do another test just to make sure we're not off base. Now this piston should fit into this cylinder. Now I'm not, don't remember, was this the standard side or the other? Well, let's find out. So it doesn't go into here, but it goes into here. So let me flip the block around. I'm going to show you a test that you can do, that anybody can do. You don't, you don't need a dial bore gauge. You can do this test with just a feeler gauge. So let's get our feeler gauge out again, one of my favorite measuring tools. Now we said we were four and a half thousandths, between four and a half and five thousandths, closer to five thousandths. So let's start with a four thousandths. I'm going to clean it off a little bit just in case there's any grit or anything on it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the camera in closer so you can see how I'm doing this. This was another technique taught to me by a, another machine shop guy of a quick test. So I can take my piston, hold on to it, I can put my four thousandths in here at an angle and if I'm four thousandths this should go in here, right? And it does. It's a little tight but it goes in there. So I'm measuring at my skirt at the top of the cylinder. This goes all the way down into the cylinder. Not all the way, but pretty far. So let's go to five and let's see where we're at. And this is a great way to double check your work before you do your final assembly. You want to find out now before you put it all together and run it. So now we're at five thousandths here. And it goes down in there, but it is really tight, right? It's, it's hardly moving. So I know I'm between four and a half and five thousandths. Let's check the other one. Same thing, right? Won't go in the rest of the way. So we know our machining was done really well by an expert. <laughs> so it's, a good, it's good to know and it's a good feeling 
when you know what you did was, was machined and done properly because then you know you're going to have good longevity out of this motor. So our next steps is we're going to clean up a little bit. We're going to put our brushes away, make sure they're covered up, put them on the shelf, all of our machining stuff out of the way. We have nice clean rags here now. You see a little dirt here from me cleaning the block, but I flipped that rag over so there's no grit on it. So now we have everything lubricated. We just have to start reassembly. We're going to get the crank in there. The other thing I didn't show you is I cleaned the surface where, the, where they meet together. Not a big deal, so that's nice and clean. It doesn't take much because there's just um, OMC Loctite. Not OMC, but Loctite makes it. And it's the gel, the 518 gel that goes between the two halves. It had an OMC part number for many years, but it's really made by Loctite. It's just red Loctite in a gel form. So we're going to flip this block over and we're going to start with the crankshaft and we have to do our pistons. So I think I'm going to flip it over. I have my new pistons on this side. This way I'm going to work on my bench. If you see, I put another rag here on top of my clean rags because I'm going to knock the wrist pin out of those damaged pistons and they probably have some filings and some nastiness on them so i'm going to do that here and put my new pistons on set them aside get my ring gaps or, or get my rings on my pistons and get them all set up and ready to go and we'll put this side together first so let's dig into our pots parts box i'll get the two nasty pistons out here we'll get them ready to go and then we'll get our crankshaft out actually our crankshaft's all wrapped up as well we're going to inspect, make sure it's still clean, and we're going to get my famous, and it's not my famous, it was taught to me by someone else. I should have a container of it here somewhere covered up nicely. I'll have to look for it. Of Shell Rotella 15W40 diesel oil mixed with white lithium grease. That is my builder's lube because it has the highest zinc and phosphorus in it. I get it nice and thick, but I want as much oil in as I can. Really, I just use the uh, white lithium as kind of a carrier to hold it in place so it doesn't run out of the engine before we get a chance to fire it up. So that's what we're going to do next. Before I go too crazy, let's check that standard size. See what our piston wall clearance is. Still have my five thousandths here. So let's check that and see what that comes up to. And again, nice and tight on the five thousandths. So I know I'm between four and a half and five thousandths. We're ready to start rebuilding, reassembly. So let's get our old pistons out. We'll start one at a time. We'll also notice that it's very black and nasty inside here. So I'm going to go ahead to the parts washer and clean this up really good first. Give you a comparison. So this was one of the good ones. You can see it's nice and clean inside. And you can see how dirty this one is. You can see the brownish color of the connecting rod and this one's kind of black. So we want to clean this up really good. Actually, I think what I'm going to do is get the circ clips out, get the pistons off, get them out of the way and just clean the rods up. I'll do that on my separate rag here. We'll knock those out of there. This way I'll get another rag on top of that when we go to install the new pistons on those connecting rods. So let's get these off of here. I want to keep this block covered. Now I am going to flip it over and everything, but right now I'm going to leave it the way it is covered just in case I, somebody d needs me to do something and I do something in the shop with my air compressor and blow stuff around and I don't want to get any dirt in there. So I want to keep it nice and clean. So we're going to go ahead and knock these out. There's our na one nasty piston. We'll put that aside and then we'll go ahead and clean up. We have the bearing here. We're going to clean up the bearing and that uh, connecting rod with the other crank bearing, which was cleaner, but we want to clean everything up, make sure it's ready to go. Now we have our connecting rods nice and clean. You can see an obvious difference from what they were before, right? You can see all the black stuff is gone. Flushed out our bearings, our wrist pin bearings. And now we mixed up our lube. We have our white lithium and Shell Rotella 15W40. 
15, yeah, 15W40. So now I'm going to take some of this lube. It is a little thin. Looks like I may need to add. Let's see how it lays. I don't want it to run out of there. A white lithium in there. Thicken up just a little bit more. I want to have 50-50 at, at um, is usually really good. But the more oil I can have in there, the better. Okay, so I've got a nice mix here. I'm going to go ahead and coat my cylinder walls first because I want to make sure they stay nice and coated. Remember, we did put a little WD-40 on it to keep it from flash rusting. But I'm going to do this while the block's in this orientation, and then we'll flip it over and put the, the crankshaft in. So I'm not going crazy. I don't want to fill up all the ports. If it gets into ports, it's not going to hurt anything. If it gets in the exhaust port, it's just going to blow out the, the bottom, and, and you'll have oil in your lower unit. And We're going to be a little oily when we first fire this up. That's certainly okay. So we're going to go ahead and make sure we coat the entire cylinder wall all the way around. I'm going to finish coating these and then we're going to get our new piston ready. Now I slid it inside that cylinder with a little WD-40 on it so it's not dirty. I didn't put it, use it for anything else but the rings, if you remember, I put in there while we were grinding. So I want to make sure I clean those rings really well and then I'll go ahead and put them on the piston after we get it set up on the connecting rod. So we'll do that next.